Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are live at Eastview High School for another Eastview Patriot baseball game. This time the Cedar Park Timberwolves have come to Patriot Park. We have been on the road a, a good amount here to get the district slate started. This is our fifth game, second at home. We've had three on the road. And we will have one more on Friday on the road at Marble Falls before settling it into a little bit of a homestand. Looking forward to that one a whole lot. Much easier, much more comfortable to come and uh, come and work some of these home games. But it's a pleasure to be here. Jack Farrell joining you as I have been throughout this regular district season. Patriots enter tonight's contest at 4-9-1. 1-3 one, one in district play. Cedar Park 11-5-1. 3-1 in district play. But this is a Cedar Park team that has been very good overall this season, but they have had their season be marred by a little bit of inconsistency at times. The last week was a great example. They did go 2-0 and in those games, but as we 13 to nothing win over Liberty Hill, and they followed that up with a Friday win, just 3-2 to over Glen. And if you're beating Liberty Hill by, by 32 the way the season has, or uh, by 13 <laughs> the way the season has gone, you're probably going to beat our Glen team by more than 3-2, to but that's baseball for you, and that's that inconsistency that we talked about. But now Cedar Park entering tonight, looking to keep their good district start rolling. Wearing the gray pinstripe uniforms, wolves across the chest. And tonight for Eastview, it'll be breaking out a little bit of a, a little bit of a throwback here. Got the off-white jerseys, some old school script on them. Both managers coming to the plate to exchange the lineups, talk to the umpires a little bit. We will have the announcements of our starting lineups here in just a moment, as well as our national anthem. But we can go ahead and take you through the pitchers. Cade Davis, an excellent athlete for this Cedar Park team, will be leading off as well as hopping up on the mound tonight. He will be the starting pitcher for the Cedar Park Timberwolves. And it's Logan Niederhauser batting eighth and pitching again here tonight. Usually when we've seen him pitch, he hasn't been in, uh, in the batting order. But he did have a multi-hit game on Friday, so it's good enough to keep him in the lineup and on the mound. But Eastview will be using that DH Gary Torres. Nonetheless, it will be Ronnie Goldman at second base as the designated fielder. But we are just a few minutes away from getting started here. Hope you're all having a good night, a good start to your week. It's a cold, well not cold, but it's a very windy day out here in Georgetown, Texas. 75 degrees. Not a whole lot of sun, a lot of cloud cover for us here tonight. But for Eastview, it will be the same same batting order at the top. It's Ben Berglund, Ryan Pullen, and Tyler Huerta, 1-3-3. Three, three. Ben Berglund going to be out in left field today. Ryan Pullen going to be the shortstop. Huerta is firmly in his place back in center field. Batting four, five, and six will be the third baseman, Jesus Santana, the DH, Gary Torres, and the catcher, Joe Quintanilla. Ever scooting up in that lineup, he's batting sixth today. Patrick Reyes, the first baseman at seven. Pitcher Logan Niederhauser, and rounding out the batting order for Eastview will be Rendell Ellis, the right fielder. And now for the visiting team, the Timberwolves, who will be batting first. It'll be Cade Davis, number one. Left fielder, Ethan Becker. Shortstop, Julian Swift. Catcher, Luis Alonzo, Adam Vaughn, the third baseman. First baseman, Jackson Harvey, Christian Pickens, the right fielder. Second baseman, Ian Garcia, and Brooks Dillman, the center fielder, rounding it out for the Cedar Park Timberwolves. We were going to go ahead and go ahead and send it down to the PA to get us those official starting lineups. I did spoil it a little bit there for you, but we will also have the national anthem. And as you can see out there in center field, it's a windy, windy day. We've had plenty of wind out here to get our season started. But here we go, down to the field. I'd like to thank you for tuning into the broadcast. We'll be back in just a moment. Number 10, Jesus Santana. The designated hitter, number 14, Gary Torres. 
Catching number 13, Joe Quintanilla. First baseman number 12, Patrick Reyes. Pitching number 5, Logan Niederhauser. Right fielder number 15, Rendell Ellis. And second baseman number 1, Ronnie Goldman. And the rest of the lineup. Patriots are coached by Matt Pullen and Kevin Ram. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd please rise, gentlemen, remove your caps as we honor America with the playing of the national anthem. All righty, and now it is time for Patriot Baseball. Both teams out here taking the field. Already discussed the uniforms a little bit, but I'm really liking these Eastview ones. Patriots across the chest on the off-white uniforms, red socks, red caps. For numbers, think, uh, think Kansas, Kansas Jayhawks. And for Cedar Park, the numbers don't quite match the, the chess script. The numbers kind of think TCU football, a little futuristic. But got the classic cursive script, Wolves, across the chest. Love a pinstriped uniform. Green caps for the visiting team. Green batting helmets as well. But it will be Logan Niederhauser for what is a KMAC Cup game. Got two different broadcasts for you going on Vibe Live tonight. Brad Cohn will be handling the Cedar Park side of things. He's been there for years. But... Goes back to the old days when he still had K-Max Sports since bought out by Vipe, and that's what we are now. When I started working here, we were still K-Max Sports, but enjoying the Vipe moniker just as well. It's a classic matchup here, and now the Patriots look to pull off what would be somewhat of an upset, and now Kate Davis getting ready to step to the plate. Niederhauser has been the most uh, consistent arm for this Eastview team throughout the season. So they're looking to him to sort of right the ship a little bit and try and dig themselves out of a one and three hole. It is, of course, tough to be part of this district, one of the top districts in the area. You got two top ten teams in the state. I mean, it's a tough one. And there you see Patrick Reyes jogging back over to first base. Patrick getting the start in last game against Rouse on the mound. Now he will be starting at first base. Gary Torres, seen him over there sometimes. He's dh -ing. So Goldman, the designated fielder, you see him over at first base. First pitch coming is a ball. So Niederhauser to the rubber. Was he starting pitcher against Georgetown? And as this one is hit right at Goldman, he pops up and makes the catch. We have a quick out here. Two pitches to Kate Davis here in the first. Now batting number five, Ethan Becker. Brings up Ethan Becker. As we are now swimming here into the top of the first. You hear some of that wind there. That's a big cut at the first pitch. 
So one strike, no balls to Becker here. Niederhauser sets to deliver. That one just misses outside for ball one. The Timberwolf left fielder, right-handed, steps in. Now ball and strike, one out. Still nobody on here in the first inning. Pitch from Niederhauser, that one misses in the same spot. It's ball two. Julian Swift, the shortstop, will be on deck for Cedar Park. Comes set. That catches his own. Finally was able to find that outside corner. Now two balls and two strikes to the second hitter in the lineup for the Cedar Park Timberwolves. Cade Davis, the leadoff man, lining out to shortstop. Here's the 2-2. That one's fouled off. And that one will roll out of play into the parking lot. Niederhauser, the 2-2 pitch. That one swung on and lifted into right field, shallow right, drifting under it, getting his feet set and making the put out. Is Randall Ellis out in right field? Number 24, Julian Swift. So two up, two down for Cedar Park as we now have Julian Swift, number 24, the shortstop up to the plate. Right-handed hitter. Niederhauser looking for a 1-2-3 inning to get himself started. That one misses ball one. If you want to gauge for the wind, you can look basically right above the umpire's head. It's that flag whipping around out there in the outfield between left and center. Now the 1-0. That one's laced through the infield, and that'll be down for a base hit. So Niederhauser can't get out of it cleanly, and we will have a fourth batter in the inning. It'll be Luis Alonso. Now one on with two outs. The cleanup hitter for the Timberwolves coming to the plate for his first at-bat of the game. Alonzo the catcher. Now Swift to first base. First pitch swinging. This one's popped into the air, drifting over to the Cedar Park dugout. Reyes is there to make the put out for out number three. So one base hit does not get the Cedar Park Timberwolves anymore. And a pop out in foul territory to the first baseman, handled by Patrick Reyes. Getting some run over at first base. We'll go ahead and keep it here. Patrick Reyes did play at first base over on, uh, on Tuesday. Reyes seems like he kind of alternates between first base and pitching. So he's out there. When he's on the mound, they... I like to put Gary Torres at first base. Otherwise, I like to keep Gary in that DH role, place where he has thrived thus far in the season. But now for Eastview, it's the same three that have led off the entire entire district run here. It's Ben Berglund, Ryan Pullen, and Tyler Huerta. Seven, six, and eight by positions, left field, shortstop, and center. Ben Berglund, he's been good for a hit. In each of these games, he went one for three with a hit by pitch against Rouse. But there you see out on the mound is number one, Kate Davis. Now back out onto the field is Luis Alonso. Took him some time to uh, to get that get all that catcher gear on as he did make the final out of the inning. The practice catcher coming out, fielding a few before. But now, here's Kate Davis. The umpire steps in, so I imagine we'll be getting started here pretty shortly. Ryan Pullen, batting second. Came off an 0 for 3 day. Tyler Huerta, 1 for 3 day when he did have two strikeouts. Nifty throw down. As you can see, Luis Alonso's arm, he's showing it off there. But here comes Ben Berglund, once again walking up to the Bowling for Soup, Phineas and Ferb theme song. And I love that. Off the Patriots, number nine, ben Berglund. Now into the bottom of the first. Thank you for tuning in here tonight on Vibe. 
Should have a pretty exciting one. Is a quick inning for Logan Niederhauser to get things started as that one's going to miss outside. A good take for Ben Berglund to get us started. It's Berglund's turn in left field today. Seen him play plenty of shortstop as that one's going to miss low and outside for ball two. The 2-0 to Berglund. That's a big cut there at a pitch that seemed to be in the strike zone, so strike one to Berglund. It's a good, good pitch to swing at for Ben as here's the 2-1 as that's going to miss high and outside for ball three. These two looking to get themselves started with some action on the bases. And their leadoff hitter is that swing and a miss, strike two. So the count goes full for Berglund as they're making Kate Davis work here out of the gates. Patriots looking for their fifth win on the season. Second in district play. Here's the 3-2 pitch. That's fouled back. So Berglund's staying alive here. He's been seeing it pretty well at the plate. Is now the 3-2. As that's foul tipped into the glove of K. Davis, a swinging strikeout for the Patriot leadoff hitter as Berglund is retired for out number one. Ryan Pullen up to the plate, the shortstop for the Patriots. Looking to get his hitting streak back alive after going 0 for 3 against a very talented Rouse pitching staff. Did reach via hit by pitch though, so nobody on with one out and first pitch swing is this one's lifted high in to the shallow outfield and there is going to be a put out in shallow center field for the second baseman Ian Garcia. So Ian Garcia puts it away and after making Kate Davis work, pulling gets aggressive. So now with nobody on and two outs, Tyler Huerta to the plate. One for three with a pair of strikeouts as the lefty comes into the box. First pitch to him, misses low. As Davis trying to send him up there. This here's the 1-0. That's going to miss low and inside as well. So 2-0, Berglund also saw a 2-0 pitch. Don't want to get too aggressive. Swing at something you shouldn't. As a tough take there from Huerta. You can tell by his body language he thought that one was a bit outside. But can't get the call. The count goes 2-1. As Davis has shown a good job of battling back when he gets into a, a bit of a hole. Here in this uh, bottom of the first, here's the pitch. That one's going to miss outside. And that's a very tough take from Huerta. Makes the count three and one. Because these few might try and put together a two-out rally. The three-one pitch. That misses inside. So a two-out walk for Tyler Huerta to keep this bottom of the first inning going. Jesus Santana now to the plate. 0 for 3 against Rouse. Santana who's really come along defensively so far this season. Improved gradually, game by game. Now steps into the box with one on and two outs here. The bottom of the first inning. First pitch swinging. Swings through it. That's strike one. Davis looking in. Shaking off a couple of signs. Comes together. The pitch misses low ball one. Even count, one and one. Where to on first? Is that misses high for ball two? Where to playing it conservative at first base, not taking too big of a lead. Still on the bag for now. Just a couple steps off of first base. Jackson Harvey, the first baseman, is ready for it. Is that's another swing and a miss for Jesus Santana? 
Count evens up two and two. So two balls, two strikes, two outs. Still plenty early in this one. The 2-2 comes. Zat just misses the outside corner. and That's been a pretty consistent call here today. This umpire has a very clear idea of what he wants in a strike zone. That one just misses. Where to going to have to be chased back to first base there. No tag was made by Harvey. So where to black, excuse me, back in plenty of time. But now three balls, two strikes with two outs. Where to should be going. And he is. That one's going to miss outside. So back-to-back -back walks with two outs for Kay Davis. And the inning will continue for Gary Torres. So Torres, he went hitless in the last game, but he did have a walk. So the Patriot DH with a chance with runners in scoring position is now Cedar Park going to have a quick meeting at the mound. So some early struggles for the Cedar Park pitcher after getting a strikeout and a first pitch swinging pop out has since walked back to back hitters Huerta on five pitches Santana on six but now it brings up Gary Torres number 14 not in the field tonight he's DHing Quintanilla will be on deck if we get to it now another lefty for the Patriots steps in as you see that wind starting to pick up once again Davis comes set checks on Huerta at second base Here's the first pitch. Is this one a little cue shot out into left field? But that one's just going to get a little too much air underneath it. Settling under it is Ethan Becker, the Cedar Park left fielder. And that will be it here in the bottom of the first inning. So the two-out threat does not come to pass. But two walks reach for Eastview, Huerta, and Santana. But that will be it. Otherwise, we are now going to head to the top of the second inning. Adam Vaughn, Jackson Harvey, and Christian Pickens will be due up for the Timberwolves right after this. I'd like to thank you for tuning in tonight. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vibe Live. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Back into it. We are ready here for inning number two. Logan Niederhauser will be on the mound. As he was excellent in his first inning of work. Jack Farrell here. Looking for a Patriot win. Adam Vaughn, the third baseman, coming up to the plate, number 25. So I really enjoyed what I've seen from Logan Niederhauser both tonight and throughout the season as he starts him off with the ball. Here's the 1-0. Big swing and a miss there for Adam Vaughn. Count evens up. One and one. That one's hit well. That'll be a base hit. Where to jogging back on it. It will just be a single, but a leadoff base hit for the Timberwolves here in the top of the second inning. Adam Vaughn is aboard for Jackson Harvey. Number 26, Jackson Harvey. A couple of big bats here in the middle of the order for the, uh, the Timberwolves, excuse me.
Throw over, not in time. Misses outside. Timberwolf third baseman looking to advance. Or excuse me, uh, other way around. The Timberwolf first baseman is looking to advance. The Timberwolf third baseman here. The 1-0. That's going to miss high, so now quickly 2-0. Niederhauser not as sharp here to start the second inning. Here's the 2-0. That one looked to be out of the zone, but fouled off by Jackson Harvey and out of play. So now two balls and one strike to the first baseman. Steps back in. Bit of a lead there at first base. That's going to miss outside. Pickens on deck. The 3-1 pitch from Niederhauser. Runner goes. That'll miss outside. So Vaughn advances on the walk. Harvey to first base. And mission accomplished for Harvey. Brings up Pickens. Pickens getting some signs from his third base coach. Because now he's ready to go. Niederhauser looking in. Checks the runner at second base. Now to the rubber. First pitch swinging, and that's going to be chopped foul down the third base line. Ooh, nice little catch there by the Cedar Park third base coach. Backhanded it. No glove. But now, no balls and a strike to Christian Pickens playing out in right field today. This is the first chance of the game for Cedar Park with the runners in scoring position. Foul tipped into the glove of Quintanilla. Quickly 0-2 to Christian Pickett. So now Niederhauser with a little bit of room to work. Don't have to go right at him necessarily here. Now looking the runner back at second base as this one's going to be fouled off. That's the perk of an 0-2 as that one was certainly low, but Pickens couldn't take any chances. Had to offer. So Vaughn there, watch him at second base. You can get a look at him on the on the screen here. Several steps off the bag there. Niederhauser making sure he's okay. This one's hit hard into left field. That one will get down for a base hit. Skip off the wall and over the fence. So it will be a ground rule double. And the runner from first, Jackson Harvey, will have to stay at third base, but Adam Vaughn comes home to score, and Cedar Park is struck first in the top of the second inning. It's a one to nothing Timberwolves. Number two, Ian Garcia. That one skipped off the top of the wall and over the fence. As Christian Pickens takes the 0-2 pitch, as we've seen that throughout these few games, is that Eastview, if they get ahead on a on a batter, they're not compensating for that batter being much more aggressive. That's an 0-2 pitch. That was doubled and brought home a run. But now nobody or nobody out here with two on, both of them in scoring position. That brings up Ian Garcia with the 1-0 count. Now 2-0 count to Garcia. The 2-0 from Niederhauser. That one's going to miss. That's a wild pitch. Lucky bounce as Quintanilla now throws low on the throw. Another runner is going to come home, and they've got a chance to get him here as that is going to be out at home plate. If Quintanilla puts that throw on the money, the lucky bounce, it skipped right off the concrete on the backstop, but he couldn't make the throw back to Niederhauser. 
So on the wild pitch, a run scores. Christian Pickens tried his chances, came around to try and get home, and was tagged out at the plate. So now Ian Garcia with a 3-0 count. The base is now vacant. It's a 2-0 lead for the Cedar Park Timberwolves. The 3-0, that'll find the zone. Strike one. Because now Garcia will have an at-bat. 2 to nothing here. Two runs come across in the second. The 3-1. That's offered at, but fouled up, and back out of play. Heads up, everybody. Count goes full with one out. Nobody on for Garcia. The 3-2. Just misses inside, so Ian Garcia is aboard with a one-out walk. Fortunate here for Eastview, though, now instead of runners on the corners at first and third with nobody out. They've got just one on with one out. So no immediate run threat. But Garcia does have some speed on the base paths. Brooks Dillman to the plate now. Rounding out the lineup here, the nine hole hitter. Center fielder. That'll miss outside. We've got him, ooh. A bit of a big run is for a uh, big lead off there. Forgot the word lead off for Garcia. He almost got caught there in no man's land. Quintanilla's throw not in time. Now a ball and no strikes. Niederhauser's pitch. Fouled off, strike one. Kate Davis on deck. Still looking here to get to the bottom of the second. One ball, one strike for Niederhauser. Looking in, going to try the pickoff again. This one much closer. No ball and a strike. There's a lot of noise coming out of that Cedar Park dugout. 1-1. One, one. Swung on, lifted high into the air into right field. Ellis and Huerta running on it. Tyler settles under it and is there for the second put out of the inning. Pro gets away from him a little bit. Pullen going to have to chase that one down. So a quick fly out for Brooks Dillman for out number two. Ellis and Huerta. Both had a ways to go to get to it. Tyler called him off, but now Kate Davis on with one on and two outs. Davis lined out right to Ronnie Goldman his first time up. Now the 0-0. That one's hit into center field. Huerta ranging back and right to him. Tyler Huerta looking like a wide receiver. The over the shoulder catch for the third put out of the inning. That's another line out there for Kate Davis. Two runs score on two hits and a walk. But that's all Cedar Park is able to muster. So two runs score. And now we head to the bottom of the second inning. It'll be Joe Quintanilla, Patrick Reyes, and Logan Niederhauser do up the catcher, the first baseman, and the pitcher. In the bottom of the second, back out onto the mound will be Cade Davis. We'll be... We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be back in just about 45 seconds. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the broadcast tonight. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vite. Interested in Vite Campus? Vite Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vipe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Quintanilla. This here's the first pitch to him. Misses outside, so Joe Quintanilla, one for three in his last outing. Takes the first pitch for a ball from Cade Davis. Quickly 2-0 to Joe Quintanilla. Now 
as Davis is out for his second inning of work. Here's the pitch, the 2-0, that misses. So quickly, the leadoff hitter for Eastview up 3-0 in the count as Davis seems to be rushing his mechanic, or uh, rushing his, his motion a little bit. He's trying to get back to the rubber quite a bit here as that one's going to catch the outside part of the zone. Quintanilla, he stayed in himself. But taking all the way on 3-1, here's the 3-0. Three, here's the 3-0 three, oh, three, has popped up and out of play. Not sure where that one landed, but full count now to Quintanilla. The full count pitch is swung on. Quintanilla chased at it, and that'll be the second strikeout of the game for Kate Davis. Brings up first baseman Patrick Reyes. Good defensive player. Hit list in his last outing. Looking to get things going with one out. Eastview, no hits in the game so far. Cedar Park with three. And there that goes. Patrick Reyes, first pitch, jumps on it. That's a base hit. Good bit of contact. And Eastview has something going with Logan Niederhauser. Coming up. Pitcher giving up two runs. One of those runs scoring on a wild pitch. That's the first base hit of the game for Eastview. Niederhauser taking inside, ball one. You see Reyes out there. Look at this aggressive lead. They're not going to do it well. <laughs> Davis steps off. But now Reyes taking a few steps off. As Niederhauser fouls this one back into the net, strike one. Evens the count. as a competition for the foul ball between these two. That was Logan Vox getting the ball for Cedar Park. Now one and one, the pitch, that's going to miss. Ooh, that's going to catch the outside corner. Tough take for Logan Niederhauser. He's now down in the count one and two. It's Reyes, a few steps off first. As this one swung on and hit high into the air, drifting back on the third baseline. And there to make the put out is Jackson Harvey. So we'll pop up from Niederhauser to third base for out number two. As Patrick Reyes remains the only base runner in the second inning for Eastview. Two outs now for Rendell Ellis. Number 15, Rendell Ellis. Ellis 0 for 3 against Rouse, taking this first pitch. That's in there, strike one. So Reyes with the aggressive lead once again. The 0-1, that's gonna hit Ellis right in the back. So now, two on with two outs. Another runner in scoring position here for Eastview. Berglund struck out his first time up. Did work the count full. K. Davis went down 2-0 in that at bat. Was able to come back and strike out Berglund. Checking Reyes. That's going to miss outside. So another 1-0 to Ben Berglund. Both these teams turning over their lineup in the second inning for the first time. But Eastview hasn't gotten any runs out of it as Berglund takes a big cut and a pitch down at strike one. The difference being Eastview sent up five in each inning so far. So that's going to miss low and away. Cedar Park only sent four to the plate in the first inning. Six to the plate in the second. That's why they've got the two runs. And this one's chopped foul and out of play by Berglund. So now Ben, even at the count, two balls and two strikes, two runners on. Runner in scoring position at second base, Eastview. Already 0 for 1 on the day with runners in scoring position. Here's the pitch. That's going to miss outside. Count goes full. So an opportunity for Patrick Reyes to take off from second base. 
Anything into the outfield will score that run, probably. Especially considering they're playing their pretty normal depth. The runner goes, and that's a swing and a miss for Berglund. Back-to-back -back swinging strikeouts for him as that ends the second inning. Nothing comes to pass on the base hit by Patrick Reyes and the hit by pitch. We head now to the bottom of the second. Kay Davis gets out of another jam. And due up for the Timberwolves will be Becker, Swift, and Alonzo. We'll be back in just a moment to get that for you. You are listening to Eastview Baseball on Vibe Live. Back in just a minute. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Box Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. Logan Niederhauser in there for his third inning of work. Given up two so far. Both of them earned. His first pitch to Ethan Becker is a strike. Becker flew out his first time up out into right field. As the sun has broken through a little bit, as you can see some of that out in right field. It is low behind us, but just a little bit of sun on what has been an incredibly cloudy day, pretty much all day. At least down, uh, down in Austin. It is cloudy here now, so I can at least say that. Now the 0-2 well outside, and Kingston is set up outside, so Niederhauser are not really trying to attack there. The 1-2 now to the left fielder. As that one's hit, right to pulling at shortstop, the high hop. The throw over is in time for out number one. Solid defensive play there for the Eastview Patriots. A good job by Ryan pulling at shortstop, battling off those hops. And he didn't make Patrick Reyes work too hard. Throw right on the money for out number one. A 6-3 put out. Now Julian Swift to the plate. He's one for one with a base hit. Taking. Ball one. Niederhauser looking in. Here's the 1-0. Swift, good eye there. Now with the hitter's count, 2-0. Oh. Here's the pitch. Is that one swung on and fouled off over the Cedar Park bullpen, or uh, the, uh, the dugout, excuse me. A little bit of both. Not the bullpen and the dugout over there. But Swift looking to make it a multi-hit game and just his second at bat. And this one's hit high on the air. Niederhauser chasing it. Quintanilla chasing it. This one's going to get right to the to the back of the wall there, right on the net. And Quintanilla tried to make a sliding stop. Couldn't quite do it. That one dangerous. Very much on the line of popping back towards us or, or staying out of play. Quintanilla couldn't quite make the sliding catch. Would have been a, just an absolute highlight. One of the plays of the year. Go ahead and write that one in. But it's not to be. Instead, Julian Swift will be back in the box with a 2-2 count. Niederhauser, here's his delivery, the 2-2. That one's chopped hard and foul. Jesus Santana watches it go by. But another 2-2 coming. Here's Niederhauser. Swing and a miss, strike three. 
So that's just the first strikeout of the game for Logan Niederhauser, but it comes in a big spot for the second out of the inning. Luis, or Luis Alonzo, excuse me, coming to the plate. Popped out his first time up, so Julian Swift can't make it a multi-hit game yet. And now, for the first time since the first inning, Logan Niederhauser has his first two batters retired. So it'll take a two-out rally if Cedar Park wants to do anything as Alonzo takes a big swing at the first pitch. He's down over one. Time called. Alonzo wants to get a few cuts in. Popped out in the first inning to end the first inning. The 0-1 to him. It's going to skip into the dirt. That'll get away from Quintanilla, but to make much of a concerted effort to stop it with nobody on the base paths. So now a ball and a strike to the Cedar Park cleanup hitter. Alonzo behind the plate today as the catcher. This one's hit high into the air. Coming up underneath it is Pullen. Pullen settles. And a little off balance, but he's there to make the catch. So a pop out to shortstop ends the top of the third inning. Cedar Park, a 1-2-3 inning. Logan Niederhauser picks up a strikeout, his first of the game. We head now to the bottom of the second. It will, uh, yes, it will be Kay Davis on the mound for his third inning. No reason to take him out now. He's been pretty excellent. Two runners allowed in each of his first two innings, but nothing other than that. Just one base hit, two walks, and a hit by pitch so far for him. It will be Ryan Pullen, Tyler Huerta, and Jesus Santana. An excellent part of the lineup for Eastview coming up here in the bottom of the third. Really going to try and get something going for the first time here tonight. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vibe Live. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Howdy, y'all. Bottom of the third time. Davis, as we said, back on the bump. No changes. Nice to have a little bit of sun as it starts to go down here tonight. We'll be getting some storms here tonight, but that won't happen until we are... Well, well out of here, unless we have the longest game in high school baseball history. There's plenty of extras. I did attend the longest college baseball game in history, I believe. Uh, so hopefully I won't bring that mojo to this. Was that, that was like 10, and it was, <laughs> it, was like a, it was like a six or seven hour game. 26 innings? Texas and Boston College in like 2009? So I guess it would have been nine. But now Ryan Pullen takes that one low. He swung at the first, or strike called for the first at least. But now Pullen with a one and one count here in the bottom of the third inning. The one one. That's hit well, but right into left field directly at the left hitter, Ethan Becker. That's out number one. Brings up Huerta. Walked his first time up, so not an official at-bat for him. Lefty stepping in. You see how deep that second baseman is playing. The scouting report is out there on Tyler Huerta. It's something like a shift, what you're witnessing over at second base and shallow right. Is Huerta going to swing at this one, pop it up, tried to go the other way. That one's going back. That's deep. That could go. It's off the wall. So Tyler Huerta going the other way with it, not something we see him do often. Nearly showed off some opposite field power. Hit that one off the wall, ranging back, and nearly running out of room was Ethan Becker. So a one-out double for Tyler Huerta. 
pulls that one into left. That is just the second hit of the game for Eastview. But Tyler Huerta now aboard on second base with one out here at the bottom of the third inning. Here's Santana now. Swinging strike at the first pitch. Walked his last time up. It'll be Gary Torres on deck. But now nothing in one. To the third baseman Santana, now nothing in two. Good bounce back here for Kate Davis. They're giving up nearly a homer. Missed it by about 5, 10 feet. The 0-2 now. Swing and a miss, a three-pitch strikeout for Kate Davis after giving up just his second hit of the ball game. Now Gary Torres to the plate. This is the third inning in a row that Eastview has had a runner on second base. And I don't want to finish that sentence by saying the third straight stranded. I'd like for Gary Torres to try and get a run in here where to, with two outs, will be running. But Torres, the DH, flew out to left field his first time up. So another left-handed hitter pulling it the other way. Takes this one inside. So now two balls and two strikes for DH. Now with a good chance to try and bring Tyler Huerta home. That one's chopped directly to the second baseman. Eats him up a little bit. Torres has a chance, and everyone will be safe. Huerta will advance one bag. That'll be an error going against Dean Garcia. He knocked it down, but it bounced away. So that'll be an E4. Going against Ian Garcia, but now Joe Quintanilla comes up to the plate. Where to the third now? Runners at first and third. A ball to Joe Quintanilla to start him out. He's a strikeout victim in his first plate appearance in the second inning. The 1 0. Quintanilla taken all the way there. Strike one. So where to can't score. So they'll need another one. Any base hit scores it. So here's Joe. A ball and a strike to him. Swinging strike there. So Davis with a chance to strand yet another runner in scoring position for Eastview. Ball and a strike. Torres with a sizable lead. That one skips well blocked. That's an excellent play at, at the behind the plate there by Luis Alonso to just keep that thing in front of him. So now two balls and strikes to the Patriot catcher. Runner goes, swing and a miss. That'll end the inning. Torres would have been safe. But it doesn't matter. Eastview can't get the runner home from third base. That's now three runners stranded in scoring position for the Patriots. Quintanilla with his second strikeout of the game. And that will do it for Eastview in the bottom of the third. No runners able to score on a double from Huerta and an error. So we now head to the top of the fourth. Will be Logan Niederhauser out there for a fourth inning of work. We've kind of seen the cap on him be about four innings. The game against Georgetown, Niederhauser Went 3.1 in that fourth inning that Georgetown really just broke everything open, scored double-digit runs. But Eastview still very much in this thing. If Logan Niederhauser can push this one a little bit deeper into the game. He does have a part of the order that ate him up in the second inning. It's Adam Vaughn leading things off, who led off the second with a single. Niederhauser started the second with a single, a walk, and a double. So as long as... Uh, it's not that. It'll be a much better fourth inning here. Just try to keep this thing close before you can give your hitters another chance to head to the plate. Patrick Reyes, who did single, will lead off for you in the fourth. 
but here's Niederhauser to Adam Vaughn. And Vaughn, first pitch swinging, lifts this one in center field. Huerta running back on it, but he will settle underneath it and make the first out of the inning. A first pitch swinging and a first pitch out for Cedar Park here in the top of the fourth. Niederhauser has been excellent against the leadoff hitters. One for four, or uh, one for one hit and uh, three outs. So one for four are leadoff hitters today. Brings Jackson Harvey to the plate. Harvey takes the first pitch. That was well outside. Some big gusts coming into this ballpark here tonight. I'm worried about the camera. Have it set up on a table so it uh, wasn't fully extended because when it's fully extended, it, it gets a little bit easier to tip over. It gets real top heavy with the camera and the other equipment at the top of it. So instead, just have it nice and compact here on the table. The 2 0, now the 3 0 to Adam Vaughn. Or that's Jackson Harvey. Adam Vaughn was just retired. Harvey walked in the second inning, came around to score as well on the wild pitch. Three balls and no strikes to the first baseman, Jackson Harvey. Four-pitch walk as he is aboard with one out. So one on, one out. Brings up Christian Pickens, who doubled, ground rule double off an 0-2 pitch. Pickens steps in, looking to replicate some of that previous success. Can't do it there. A bit of a defensive swing for Christian Pickens as that one was well high. But now 0-1 to the Timberwolf right fielder. This is when he times up. The diving stop by Santana. Loses his glasses. A skip on the throw, and that's an out. A beautiful defensive play by Jesus Santana over at third base. Laid out, was able to pop up and get the runner. So that's a fielder's choice. or, a, or I guess not. That's just a sacrifice on the ground out to get it. Harvey up to second base. It's a ground out. That's a beautiful, beautiful play by Jesus Santana. And we talked pregame about how far he has come along defensively, and that's probably his play of the season so far. Committed a few errors in some of those earlier games against Liberty Hill and Glenn, but there, he's not looking like the same fielder, and that's going to be big for Eastview over there in the hot corner. But that brings up Ian Garcia. Walked his first time up. So now runner at second base with two outs. And that one's hit. That'll get through the hole between short and third base. Runner being waved around. The throw from Berglund will not be in time. So a two-out RBI single for Ian Garcia brings Jackson Harvey home from third base, and it's a 3 to nothing ball game. Brings up Brooks Dillman. Nothing and nothing. As Dillman checks it, and they're not going to give it to Niederhauser. That's ball one. So now Garcia at first base with the runner coming around to score. Three runs on four hits for Cedar Park here tonight. Here's the 1-0. That'll miss high. Now Niederhauser back to the mound, looking in. Accepts the sign from Quintanilla. Come set. The 2-0 pitch. That's chopped to the second baseman, Goldman. Fields it in time for out number three. So Brooks Dillman ends the inning on a ground out to second base, but not before 
Cedar Park tacks on one more. They did it with a walk and a single. Christian Pickens ends up having a big play on that ground out, advancing Harvey over to second base because otherwise that run does not score. But on the same end of that with Pickens, a heck of a put out by Jesus Santana at third base to get the second out of that inning. But that'll do it for the top of the fourth. We head down to the bottom of the fourth now. We'll see. Is it going to be Davis again? And it will be Cade Davis again for his fourth inning of work. Logan Niederhauser through four complete. Has only given up three runs on four hits. Not a bad start for him at all. Especially against the Cedar Park team that at times has been known to catch fire this season. Not so much against Glenn, just a 3-2 to two ball game, but they put up 13 against Liberty Hill and just four and a half innings. I mean, if you, you know the run rule, we've seen it uh, against Georgetown for Eastview. If you go up 10, ten runs, um, the game ends depending on, uh, you know, who the home team is after four complete or after five complete or after four and a half. For example, if, if Eastview went up 10 to nothing, it would end after four and a half as they are the home team. But they put up 13 runs and four innings, maybe five. So that is a pretty productive night for Cedar Park against a, 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 very, a very solid Liberty Hill team. One that jumped out on Eastview to start off that game, and Eastview held them in check otherwise, but it was a tough start for them. It will be Patrick Reyes. As Reyes comes to the plate for his second at-bat. Singled his first time up for the first one of the ballgame for Eastview, as he might have another one. This one's lifted into center field, but settling under it and making the out will be Brooks Stillman. So an aggressive approach for Patrick Reyes at the plate seems to be a, a trademark of his. It's worked half the time today. He's one for two with that fly out there. Logan Niederhauser comes up. He popped out his last time at the plate. As Logan has developed into something of an ace <laughs> for this Eastview team. We're as close to one as they've got. But a quick out to start the inning for Cade Davis. A swing and a miss there, 0-2 to Logan. Davis looking to get out of this inning quickly. That'll be fouled off. So we still got an 0-2 count to the Patriot pitcher. As that misses low. Good take there from Niederhauser on the 0-2. Tough to lay off a pitch like that. Now the 1-2. Offered at it. But the home plate umpire, and they go for the check down at first base. They're not going to give it to him there. So from here, it looked like Niederhauser did hold up, and that is affirmed by both of our umpires here tonight. He's now got a 2-2 count. That's going to miss. Count goes full. Ellis, the on-deck hitter for Eastview. See if Niederhauser can give him something to work with and get on base here. Here's the 3-2. Now that's fouled off, and Niederhauser will stay alive. Hadn't seen Niederhauser in the batting order consistently, but now he has been in it back-to-back -back games. And he is two for four at the plate in those opportunities. Here's the 3-2. That's a swing and a miss, strike three, make it two for five. But a good job from working it from 0-2 to a full count. And that's not much consolation for him right now as that makes Rundle Ellis come to the plate. Ellis was hit by a pitch right in the back his first time at the plate. So he's technically 0 for 0. So he's showing bunt. Tried to push that one down the third baseline. That's a foul ball. He's going to try and beat out the throw from Vaughn, but couldn't quite get it in. So now Vaughn creeps up a little bit. His toe's on the grass. You can see him over there on the left side of your screen as Ellis takes that pitch. That's a nasty breaking ball. That drops into the zone for strike two. If you can get Ellis here, that would be the first 1-2-3 inning of the game for Cade Davis. And he does just that, a strikeout for Rendell Ellis here to end the fourth inning. 
Two Ks in the inning there for Cade Davis. We head now to the top of the fifth. Due up will be the top of the order. Cade Davis himself will be starting things off for Cedar Park. It'll be Davis, Becker, and Swift here in the top of the fifth. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vibe Live. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result, it transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports, there's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. We will have a pitching change in the top of the fifth here. It'll be Ben Berglund. Berglund playing out in left field. Rendell Ellis switches to left. So in right, we'll have Niederhauser. Niederhauser, his night is done. Four complete. Gives up three. Four hits. Not a bad start there for Logan Niederhauser. The only big inning Cedar Park had was there in the second. Scored two. That one's going to miss high from Berglund. So his first pitch is a ball. So we now have a 2-0 count to K. Davis, the leadoff hitter, who struck out Rundle Ellis to end the fourth inning. That was his seventh strikeout of the game. Not bad. As Berglund finds his own there for the first time. Strike one. Two balls and a strike. That one misses downstairs. Three balls and a strike to Cade Davis. Three balls and a strike. The pitch, that's going to miss low, so a lead off walk to Cade Davis. As Berglund came in for two innings against Rouse. Gave up one. Go Houston. So they're putting Berglund back out there. He walks his first man up. Now Becker to the plate. Oh no, it looks like we have a pinch hitter. We'll go ahead and change that. Houston Molinaro. Or Molinaro. So that'll be it for Becker in the lineup. Is now taking inside is Molinaro. So the pinch hitter enters the game with a one on and nobody out here. And a Pretty close game here in the top of the fifth. Berglund's pitch, that'll miss low, skips in the dirt for ball two. Berglund having a little bit of trouble finding the strike zone here. Might just need a moment to settle in. The 2-1. One. That one's hit high into the air, but that should be playable. Charging at it is the left fielder, Ellis, and he is there just in time to get the put out in left field. Ranging back on it was Pullen, but it didn't seem like he quite uh, had quite found the ball. So it's a pop out into shallow left field for the pinch hitter, Houston Molinaro. So that brings up Julian Swift with one on and one out. Alonzo on deck, so no more pitching 
or uh, hitting changes, no more pinch hitters here. At least in the immediate future. Got Davis on first base, but I, th I believe that's a pinch runner. We'll go ahead and get a name on that as soon as we can because got that courtesy runner, of course, for pitchers and catchers. Time called. Big lead over there at first base. Here's the pitch. Skips low. That'll get away. Runner goes. That's Austin Garcia. Number three. Now at second base. So with one on, now a runner in scoring position. The 1-0. Berglund checking the runner at second base with a big lead. That one slapped right at Santana. He knocks it down. Santana pops up. The throw low. That's going to be up the line. So the runner will be safe. Santana flashing the leather. Couldn't flash the arm. And everyone's safe. The runner cannot advance from second base. So Garcia remains there at second base. But an error. We're going to go ahead and uh, we'll see what they score that as. I would consider that to be an error because we would have had the throw. Throw was in time. There's now a big lead, and ooh, if that gets into Poland's glove, Ryan just couldn't squeeze it. That would have been a tag out, a pickoff there. But instead, he's just safe. And tough to see there for Santana, who's been playing so well at third base, just, just couldn't quite make that throw. Now here we go, Berglund with two on and one out. That one swung on. Bit of a half swing from Alonzo. Seen a couple of those from Cedar Park. Just didn't quite commit to it either way, and the, the momentum just made it a strike. Check on Berglund with Quintanilla. Might have had some confusion with the signs. But Berglund on the mound once again. Checks the runner. The 0 1. That's going to miss inside. Alonzo had to step back to avoid that one. But Adam Vaughn on deck. The bounce is just right. Eastview with a chance for a double play. Now 1 and 1. That one just misses Berglund with a tough pitch. Unfortunately, couldn't get the call. It's now 2 and 1. Put a little extra English on it. Here's the 2-1. That one catches the outside corner. It's now strike two. So Berglund gets it back. This is now the 2-2 to Louis Alonzo. Here's the pitch. That one hits him. Got him on the left arm. Because now the bases are loaded with just one out. Because that wind is getting worse. But it'll be Adam Vaughn now to the plate with the bases loaded. Vaughn has a chance to break this thing open with one swing of the bat. Vaughn is one for two today. Single and a fly out. Berglund will lead things off here once we get to the bottom of the fifth. That's a strike, a beautiful pitch there. Vaughn, the third baseman, looking to make it a multi-hit game for himself. This is the 0-1. Berglund delivers. Another defensive swing there from the Timberwolf. Kind of came out choked up on that thing. It looked like a swinging bunt. But it will be an 0-2 count now. As Vaughn looking to clear the bases, Berglund with a chance for a big strikeout. Here's the 0-2. That one just misses. Quintanilla makes the stop.
Berglund. The one two. Big swing and a miss. That's a huge strikeout for Ben Berglund in Eastview. As that's now out number two as they eliminate the opportunity for a sacrifice fly isn't in a three run game. Any insurance is important. Brings up Jackson Harvey. Two walks in the game. He scored two of these three runs. He also has a big chance to break this thing open. He takes that one, strike one, as Berglund struggling to throw strikes when he got to the mound has now been dealing him. Gets Vaughn on strikes. Is now here the Timberwolf first baseman. 0-1. That misses. It's Pickens on deck. Bases loaded, two outs. A ball and a strike. Berglund comes set. Here's the pitch. Check swing. Way to hold off there by Jackson Harvey. He's now looking at two balls and a strike. This has been a pretty quick game, just an hour into it. So here's the 2-1. Chasing high, strike two. Berglund fortunate there. That's a good pitch from him. Fooled Harvey. So there's that wind. Ooh. It's whistling through these nets. But now the 2-2. Two -two. Time called. Maybe get a little less wind. Now here we go. Berglund, the 2-2. Two -two. That one's chopped the foul. Just staying alive is Jackson Harvey. Back to it. The 2-2 two -two to the lefty. Another one. That one's fouled off. Harvey's staying alive here. Wind making it much colder than it is here tonight. So now two balls and two strikes once again. The delivery. As that one's hit right at Goldman. They'll go the short way with it. And that is out number three. The bases loaded threat does not come to pass. Berglund loads him up, but doesn't allow one to come home. A four. Six. Put out there for Ronnie Goldman and Ryan Pullman. So, Eastview now has to capitalize. Can't go scoreless here again. Kate Davis, who Eastview has had a hard time touching, especially here as we have gotten further along into the game. He struck out two in the fourth as well as two in the third. He has two strikeouts in every inning but the first as we now head to the bottom of the fifth. So despite a walk, an error, and a hit by pitch, Ben Berglund didn't give up a hit there. Berglund did have a, we, we've seen that a little bit. Uh, we've seen him struggle with control, but Cedar Park unable to get a hit off of him. Liberty Hill was taking advantage of, of his inability to control his pitches, but they jumped on it. Cedar Park unable to really jump on it. As really, only one of those uh, runners, or two of those were um, as a result of Berglund. But now we head to the top of the order for Eastview. It'll be Ben Berglund himself leading things off. He has struck out twice here today as Kay Davis has stymied him at the plate. As Berglund does have a base hit in each of the games that we have covered. So Ben Berglund stepping in was the first and the third strikeouts of the game for Cade Davis. So that misses ball one, a good start. 
for Berglund, he has struck out twice, but both of them were after working a full count. So another 2-0 to Ben. See if he can capitalize here. As you never know, Davis led off that inning. But he did come uh, come back into the dugout as he was pinch run for as Berglund hits this one into shallow right field. Coming on to make a sliding put out is Christian Pickens. So after going up 2-0, Berglund flies out to right. That'll bring up Ryan Pullen over two on the day. Huerta has one of the two hits on the game for Eastview. He will be batting third here in the inning. Pullen pulls back the bunt, but it was a strike instead. Strike one. K. Davis can't get his eighth K of the game on, on Berglund, as this is going to miss a low to Ryan Pullen as well. But now the 1-1. One, one. That's chopped on the infield. Third baseman charges up on it. The throw over is in time. A good defensive play by the third baseman. It's like we have a defensive substitution for Cedar Park. That's why that means I, I assume Houston Molinaro is not in the field. That's Quint Mullen. Quint Mullen, number 15, at third base now. Huerta steps in now with two outs. One on out of Tyler. Huerta one for one on the game with a walk and a double. He's the only Patriot base runner to reach all the way to third base here today. As this one is hit well, but right into the waiting glove of the right fielder Pickens. And a quick one, two, three inning as Kay Davis is having himself an outing. So two flyouts out into right field. And that ends the bottom of the fifth. We head now to the top of the sixth. Eastview running out of outs. Need to get something going. They have two hits. And now back out for another inning will be Ben Berglund. It's the top of the sixth now. It'll be Christian Pickens, Ian Garcia, and Brooks Dillman due up for the Cedar Park Timberwolves. We'll be back. You're listening to Eastview Patriot Baseball on Vibe Live. Keep it here. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Fox Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. Pickens do up. Berglund back to the mound. Christian one for two on the day. That one skips low, ball one. The 1-0. That one's popped up on the infield. Santana, ranging on it, throws his hat down, comes over, and right on top of the bag makes the put out. As Jesus Santana is back with another defensive play. Two, Brings up Ian Garcia, who's one for one today, walked his first time up, brought in that third run of the game, his second. Was back in the fifth inning or the fourth inning. Was the last run given up by Niederhauser. And now a swing and a miss at a pitch that was well outside. So far outside, Quintanilla couldn't get to it. As Garcia looking for another base hit. The 0-1. 
Zadden catches the outside corner. It's quickly 0-2. Berglund looking for a similar result, a shutout inning, but he'll hope to do it with a whole lot less foot traffic as here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss way early on that one as that's a nasty pitch from Ben Berglund for out number two. Brings up Brooks Dillman to the plate now. He is over two on the day. But Berglund, already a much better start. He got his first two batters, but that's his second hit by pitch. That's Dillman's first time on the base paths here today. That'll bring up the pitcher, Cade Davis. We'll see what they do with Cade here. He's over two with a walk. He walked in the fifth inning. It was a leadoff. And he was the, the first batter Berglund faced. This will be Davis, who has been just excellent on the mound as he chops this one to Goldman. Goldman can't field it, as that's going to be an error at second base as Kay Davis reaches to keep the inning alive. Pushes Brooks Dillman up to second base. As that brings up yep, Molinaro once again. Have to get an eye on where he's at out in the field. But Houston looking for a base hit after popping up his first time up. Third error of the ball game for Eastview. This one's fouled back, strike one. Goldman there, taking his eyes off of it. A big lead for the runner at first. Ray is not covering the bag. The 0-1, that's going to miss in the dirt. Runner's going to go. That's right by Quintanilla's feet. He couldn't find it. Looking a little bit too far away, but now Kate Davis advancing to second, I actually, I bet that's Garcia out there once again. That puts Brooks Dillman to third base now. Julian Swift will be the man on deck. But for now, Molinaro with an opportunity to bring two home now. Now the 1-1. This one's fouled off, strike two. It was Molinaro. Anything into the outfield probably brings home two with two outs. So it's a big spot once again for Ben Berglund. Comes set, the 1-2. As this one's roped, and that'll squeak past Goldman. And both of those runs, not going to score the runner from third, but the runner comes to second base on the throw home. So a single and another base on the throw. But that pushes Cade Davis's runner, Garcia, over to second base, or excuse me, third base from second base, and Brooks Dillman able to come home. So not enough hard contact, as that's a good play by Niederhauser out and right charging up on it to Get the throw in in time. But now, once again, same result, just with a different score. Runners on second and third. With two outs. Four to nothing now. This one's hit hard into center field. Huerta ranging back. Wind playing tricks on this one as he settles under it and is there for the putout. But Cedar Park tacks on one more. It's now a four to nothing lead. They do it on a hit by pitch, an error, and a single. So Cedar Park does get one due to the error. It's now four to nothing. We head to the bottom of the sixth. It will be Santana, Torres, and Quintanilla due up for your Patriots. We'll be back right after this. Interested in Vipe Campus? 
Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Here we are, Kate Davis back on the hill one more time. So he has been stellar, virtually untouchable, has just given up two hits. As with pitching like that, you're going to be in a lot of games. As my goodness, this wind just keeps getting worse. <laughs> Davis back to it. It's Santana, who's over one today, struck out and walked. Here's the pitch. Takes it. Ball one. Patriots down to their final six outs. Need to put something on the board here. Santana fouls it back. So now a ball and a strike to the third baseman, the leadoff hitter here in the sixth. Davis looking for strikeout number eight. Didn't get anyone in the fifth. His first inning without a strikeout here tonight. Now the 1-1. One -one. That's fouled back right to me. He has Santana down 1-2. But now one and two. As time called by Santana, got it last minute. As Davis was already set and throwing. Now that flag <laughs> bending the pole. Out in left center. That'll miss outside. Ball two. Good take there from Santana. He stays alive. Looking to be a leadoff man to get on. Would be the first leadoff hitter to reach base tonight for East View. Was that misses low for ball three. So the count now full. So Kate Davis, I know there are rules about pitch counts. He's got to be approaching them. As when you're striking guys out, you end up throwing a lot of pitches. But here's the 3-2. That one's popped high into the air. It looked like Santana was just trying to foul that off, but instead it'll be a pop out into foul territory on the third base line. Brings up Torres. He's over two today. Did reach in the third inning via an error. Looking to start. A rally here in the sixth. Here's the pitch. Misses ball one. Tell Davis, he's still getting outs. He's still been incredibly productive, but he has slowed down. He's at a different stage of his pitching here. Is now 2-0. Having to work around with a lot more setup pitches, try and get guys to chase. He doesn't have quite as much gas in the tank as he was just blown by guys there early in the game. But now the 2-0. Blows by him there. Torres chased high at it for the DH. Now two balls and a strike. Four to nothing here in the sixth. This one's chopped along the first baseline. That one will stay fair. And that is an unassisted putout for Jackson Harvey at third base. That's out number two. Quintanilla to the plate. Joe over two on the day. As he breaks that skid, this is going to skip into the corner out in left field. Quintanilla rounding hard. He will have a stand-up 
two-out double. So Quintanilla keeps the sixth inning going. Now coming to the plate is Patrick Reyes. Hector Perez in to run for Joe Quintanilla, the catcher. So Perez out there at second base, taking a big old lead off second. Kate Davis checking on him, but he will pitch. As Patrick Reyes, first pitch swinging, fouls it back, strike one. Are we in a, another tornado warning that I don't know about? It would be nice if they told me. Because this is gale force. I hope you can hear what I'm saying, as this one's going to skip low for ball one to Patrick Ray as a first baseman. Patrick looking to make it a multi-hit game. That from Quintanilla, just the third hit of the ball game for Eastview. And with two outs, Ray is looking to bring one home. Misses high, so two balls and a strike to Patrick Reyes. Ms. Davis looking to leave unblemished here in the sixth. As, ooh, near the head of Patrick Reyes. That one misses high and inside. So now a 3-1 count with Logan Niederhauser on deck. May have a pinch hit for Logan. But now the 3-1 delivers. That catches the zone, strike two. So now Kitania will be off and running. So any base hit here should score, uh, well, Perez, excuse me, from second. Quintanilla got the base hit. They have their pinch runner for him. That's a swing and a miss. Strike three to end the sixth inning. Patrick Reyes strikes out, and Kay Davis comes up clutch one more time, getting his eighth K of the game, all of them swinging. Every single swipe strikeout that he has has been swinging. And now coming back for the top of the seventh now, we will have a new pitcher. We'll let you know who it is right after this. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vibe Live. Keep it here. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Good karaoke song, this one. From the Cars soundtrack. It will be Trey Walter on the mound for Eastview. So Ben Berglund goes two, gives up one. Trey Walter, number seven for the seventh inning. We've got a little bit of sprinkles coming down out of the sky. Hopefully can hold off on those until we are done here. But it will be... Middle of the order here for Cedar Park. Louis Alonzo leading things off. Or at least it would be. Looks like they're starting to bring in some pinch hitters here. Here comes Walter. Skips that one in the dirt. Well short for his first pitch. It is Louis Alonzo one more time. He is 0 for 2 with a hit by pitch. It was struck in the fifth. So he reached his last time up. It was the last runner stranded there by Ben Berglund in that bases loaded inning. But Trey Walter coming in, struggling to throw some strikes here to the leadoff hitter. He's down 2-0. Looks like we will have a pinch hitter here in the next batter. As this one is roped over the infield, and that'll be down for a base hit. So a leadoff single, the first of the game for Louis Alonzo.
now coming up to the plate. We do indeed have a pinch hitter. It'll be number 15, Quint Mullen. Mullen replaced Vaughn back out at third base, so he also replaces him in the lineup here as Adam Vaughn finishes his day. One for three, a single and a strikeout. So Mullen with his first chance here in the third for the seventh inning with one on and nobody out. No rain in the forecast, but we are getting some here. As this one's hit softly to short, pulling comes up. The throw over is in time. The second throw will not be. And Reyes doing just a great job to knock that thing down to avoid it squeaking into the Wolves' bolt, uh, dugout. So they do get the leading runner. So a fielder's choice for Quint Mullen in his first time to the plate. So Jackson Harvey's night also done. Brings up Caleb Rhodes. Cedar Park feels comfortable with the four-run cushion. Starting to bring in some pinch runners. Because this wind is picking up. And we're going to have to maybe bring some of this stuff inside if it keeps going. So hopefully Trey Walter can, uh, can get out of this inning quickly. That one well high, so a ball and no strikes to Caleb Rhodes. So now if that one's hit just a little bit stronger to pull in at shortstop, that's probably a double play. So now the throw over. Ooh, that was the closest one to a pickoff we've seen all day. They almost got Caleb Rhodes. That one was on time and on, well, just in, not in time, but very much on line. In fact, a perfect throw from Walter uh, as a pickoff attempt. But the 1-0 is that one hit to Santana. Santana going to go short way with it. Goldman on the catch. The throw over is in time. That's a double play there to end the top of the seventh. What a throw by Goldman from second. And they get Quint Mullen. It was just the fielder's choice. And a double play. 5-4-3 the old-fashioned way. Now we head to the bottom of the seventh. This will be Eastview's last chance. They've got an opportunity to walk this off if they can score five. That's a tall order. But we, we've seen them score five in an inning before. But they weren't having a deal with the man on the mound right there looking for a complete game shutty. K. Davis back to the mound. It will be 8, 9, and 1 due up for Eastview here as we end things. Hey, thank you for tuning in to the broadcast. We'll take one more break. Back after this. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. And it feels like the sky's about to open up here. As the forecast just says wind. We've got that in spades. But here we go. One more time. As taking strike one. We do have a pinch hitter for Logan Niederhauser. I believe that's Andrew Godinez. Yep, Andrew Godinez. It's Godinez now down 0-2 on the foul ball. It's now the 0-2. This one's a little cue shot right to the first baseman, and there for the putout is Jackson Harvey. So Rhodes doesn't replace Harvey in the field.
Brings up John Doherty. Haven't seen John at the plate here. We've seen him on the mound. It's Doherty looking for a base hit, looking to keep this game going. Pencil getting, pencil getting away from me with all those wins. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is absurd. There's more win now than there was during the tornado. As this one's popped up, also to third or first base, and coming up to make the play, is Davis. Davis just got laid out by his own first baseman. Now Berglund up. So we'll line out to third and a pop out to third. And now Ben Berglund, who's over three on the day, comes to the plate of looking to avoid being the final out of the inning. But here comes Davis. As this one's chopped weakly, this will be a tough play. Berglund getting on his horse. The flip over to Davis, and he is not in time. Couldn't get the foot down. So an infield base hit for Ben Berglund. And there it is. Almost snapped his, his hitting streak there. Base hit a game, and there's Berglund. That's just the fourth on the day given up by Kate Davis. And that one is as bloopy as it can get. But stats call it a base hit, and Ben Berglund will take it. So now Ryan pulling to the plate. As he pops it out of play. Keep the hope alive. Eastview looking for their first run of the ball game still. It's pulling, takes strike two right down the pipe. Eastview now down to their final strike. As that one is going to get through the infield, so we'll keep it going. Berglund advances to second base. Ryan pulling a single there and back-to-back -back hits today for the first time for the Eastview Patriots. Tyler Huerta to the plate. The chance to add one to bring up Santana, the game-tying run. Kate Davis. Ball's in his hands now. No one up in the Timberwolf bullpen. Checks the runner. Davis delivers. Suerta sends that one. That'll pop off the mound. They'll have a quick flick over, and that will be in time to retire the side and end the game. Kate Davis with an absolute gem. He finishes seven innings of five-hit baseball. Only five hits given up. Eight Ks for the Timberwolf pitcher to wind down the game. Logan Niederhauser goes four. Berglund goes two. Trey Walter goes one. Eastview loses it. Four to nothing here in the bottom of the first. The Patriots fall now to one and four in district play. Their overall record, 4-10-1, where Cedar Park improves to 12-5-1, and 4-1 and one in district play. We will be on the road one more time going at Marble Falls this week, so we've got a bit of a drive. But looking ahead after that, we will have Tuesday off. So this is our last Tuesday game for a couple weeks. The next time that we will be uh, playing on Tuesday will be on the road at Glen. For now, we have Friday, April 1st, April Fool's Day at Marble Falls. And then the next week, we will have versus Leander at 7 p.m. on Friday. So a full week between games. And then... We will have our second game of the week on Saturday versus Liberty Hill. So both games right here, one of them Friday night, one of them Saturday afternoon, 7 p.m. and 1 p.m. respectively. But that will do us, uh, do it for us here. Not much to say other than Kay Davis absolutely shut things down. The defense in the infield uh, definitely looks much better. This team, as we've said before, they they are continuing to progress. They're getting better and better as each game goes along, but the offense getting real quiet in there. Cedar Park only had six hits. Eastview had five, but Cedar Park tallied four runs on those six hits off a couple of Eastview errors. But we're going to go ahead and go and get out of this win. It's a four to nothing final. Cedar Park picks up the victory. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the broadcast here tonight. I have been Jack Farrell. Always a pleasure. We will be back on Friday on the road at Marble Falls. Come down and see us. Maybe get yourself 
some pie out in Marble Falls. I've heard uh, we might be having to set up over by the Eastview dugout in that game. So might not be the best angle, just a heads up uh, for now. But I'm going to go ahead and sign off Jack Farrell here. We'll be back on Friday. I hope you all have a great night, great rest of your week. Eastview Falls, 4 to nothing to Cedar Park.